Hey there, in this week's video we're going to be covering the 60 second lead code problem unique paths. This is an interesting problem to cover because a lot of tech companies tend to use a variation of unique paths when they are conducting interviews. For example, in my Google onsite interview, the fifth interviewer asked me a variation of unique paths. Luckily, I was able to reduce it down to unique paths and solve the problem. So. I'd say that this is a very important problem and this opens a door to a whole slew of problems that you can solve if you can understand how to solve unique paths. So let's get started by reading the problem statement. A robot is located on the top left corner of an M by N grid marked start on the diagram below, so right over here. And the robot can move either down or right at any point in time. It is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid marked finish over here. How many possible unique paths are there? So that is the problem statement that we're given. Let's see a specific example. So let's start off with an example. We're going to have an example where m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 4. Oh, uh, my bad, I meant n equal 5. I end up drawing 5 columns, so yeah, we're just going to say n equals 5. Anyway, we want to start at the top left of this grid and go to the bottom right. Right? We want to find out how many unique paths exist from the top left to the bottom right. And so the easiest way to do that is to go through every single item in the array and see how many unique paths exist to each item. So we're going to start off by going through the first row, which we know that since the robot can only go to the right, we're just going to fill the first rows up with one. And then the column, since the robot can also only go right or down, it can only be one way to go through the entire column. Now, an interesting thing is that we want to understand the pattern that is being developed here. And so right now, I am filling out the number of unique paths that it takes to reach each row column pair inside of the matrix. And we're going to try to see if there is a pattern here. So we want to start off with a matrix that's of size m by n, initialized with its first row and first column to all ones. Because we know that if there's only one row or one column, there's only one way for the robot to travel in that row or column. After we have initialized the initial matrix, all we have to do is add the previous row item and the previous column item to get the current value in the current item because in order to get to the current value we just have to know how many paths there are to get to the previous value in the previous row and the previous value in the previous column. So that's just going to be matrix of ij equals matrix of i minus 1j plus matrix of ij minus 1. And of course, at the end, what we need to make sure that we do is we return the last value in the matrix, which of course is going to be the max row minus 1 and the max column minus 1. That is going to be where our goal is located. And here's just the example from before. I'm just confirming that, of course, we want to add the previous rows value and the previous columns value. So for the big O, it's pretty simple because we're just going to have a matrix that we need to fill out and this matrix is going to be of size m by n. So the space complexity here is just going to be m by n. Interestingly enough, there is a way to solve this in linear space, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to keep it in m by n space. And of course, the time complexity also follows because we're going to be filling out this entire matrix, this m by n matrix, and since we're going to have to fill out each individual item, that's going to be m by n. And here I'm just going over the actual algorithm, which is create a matrix that's of m by n, fill out the values based on the row minus 1, column minus 1, and at the end all we have to do is return the final value. So now that we understand the algorithm, we can just take a look at the code. And the code is quite simple, actually. We're just going to be generating a matrix that has m rows and, sorry, m columns and n rows. And initially, we want to set every single value to be 1. 
And then what we're going to do is iterate through the second column and the second row, every row afterwards and every column afterwards. And what we're going to say is that the value at the specific index is going to equal the value in the row before plus the value in the column before. And that just follows straight from the algorithm that we discussed. And all we have to do at the end is return the final value in the matrix. And of course, that is going to be at the last row at the last column, which is where we want a robot to finish. So let's just submit this and make sure that it works. And of course, it does work. And right now, it looks like I'm only beating 50% of all Python submissions, which is not that great. But this is the answer that most interviewers are going to be looking for. Cool. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a subscribe for more in the future. See you guys next time.